Now the sticky toffee pudding we made last year for Christmas dessert is by far my favorite dessert for Christmas ever. I highly recommend it for your holiday dessert. But before I started making the sticky toffee pudding, my mom would make this apple cake from Debbie Marouk, the pastry chef at Richardson's Canal House Inn up in upstate New York, Rochester. A recipe from this issue of Gourmet Magazine from 20 years ago. See, she even made a note, Stephen loves this cake. I know it says apple raisin cake. We always baked it without the raisins. And it came out perfect. It's moist, the crust is slightly crunchy. We serve it with this caramel sauce on top. It's made in this bunt cake, so it's a fun shape. It's basically apple pie in a cake form. It's awesome. And if you want this recipe or the sticky toffee pudding recipe, they'll both be in my holiday plan of attack linked in the description below. So go check out the links in the description, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's just jump right into it. First steps call for preheating the oven to 350 degrees and getting a 12 inch bunt pan, which is what this is. It's got this little flute in the middle, I guess you could call it. It's like a big donut shaped cake. And inside we're gonna we lightly buttered the whole thing and then uh, did a light coating of flour all throughout to help us get the cake out when we're done. So now we're gonna make the batter. So I've got three cups of all purpose flour. I'm gonna sift. Then I have a teaspoon of baking soda and half teaspoon of salt, and we're gonna run those through this little sieve as well. So now we're gonna set that off to the side. Then we're gonna whisk together the sugars and the wet ingredients. So I'm gonna go three eggs. Then I have a one and a half cups of uh, vegetable oil. One and a half cups of granulated sugar. Half cup of brown sugar, and I'm already in trouble here. Teaspoon of vanilla extract, a tablespoon of dark rum, a tablespoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of fresh nutmeg. Oh, let's see if we can whisk this together. Want the sugars to kind of dissolve. Oh, I'm just gonna do it in a bigger bowl. Just always do it in a bigger bowl. I think that's always the lesson. Once it's like that, it should be good. We're just gonna set it off to the side while we cut our apples. Recipe calls for either Empire or Cortland, and I'm gonna use Empire. The recipe calls for a quarter inch dice, but I actually think you can go a little bit smaller. You could even slice them thin like I do in my apple pie, and they'll sort of be more distributed throughout the cake, which I think might actually be a better route. So you can choose your own kind of path. So now we've got our three elements prepared. We've got our diced apple, our sifted dry ingredients, and our mixed wet ingredients. Now we're gonna start to fold in the flour into the wet ingredients. So just add the flour in batches and with a spatula, fold the flour into the wet ingredients, making sure you're always scraping that flour off the edges and incorporating them into the batter. Once all the flour is in, it's almost gonna look like a wet peanut butter. Then we can start to fold in the apples. Now we got our bun cake, making sure there's all the excess flour is tapped out of there. And we're gonna start to spoon in the batter. So now that that's in there, get it onto a small sheet tray just to kinda, it's not gonna really bubble over, but you know, just to make it easy to pull in and out. We're gonna pop it into the 350 degree oven until uh, a cake tester will come out clean in the kind of center meat of the cake. About an hour and 20 minutes. So I got the cake in the oven and set a timer and then proceeded to make an attempt at caramel sauce. My mom used to use a store-bought caramel sauce, but I figured, hey, why don't I make my own? Well, it wasn't successful and I'm gonna share with you what happened. So down the road, we can revisit it and solve for it. I got one cup of sugar dissolved into a quarter cup of water in a heavy bottom pan and brought it up to a simmer to dissolve the sugars and to start to develop the caramel. 
If I saw any sugar crystals developed, I'd take a pastry brush with water and dissolve them back into the sugar. After about 20 minutes, I noticed a fogginess starting to develop in the sugar water and what looked like scales of crystallization beginning to form. Crystallization is no good and I'm not experienced enough with sugar to know how to fix it. So I just diluted the mixture with water so that I could discard it easily, clean the pot and try it again. This time I just added the sugars directly to the pot with the water and I didn't touch it at all. I turned the heat on and the same thing happened. It's at this point where I just thought to myself, it. It's 2020. Doesn't look like I'm making caramel today, which is fine since my mom used store-bought. I guess it's more authentic that way. At least that's what I'm going to tell myself today. At this point, it's been about an hour and 20 minutes. So I take the cake out and test it and at least the cake's perfect. So that's a win. Uh, it smells ridiculous. Now, you're always susceptible to the crystallization, but I didn't expect it to happen twice. I'm not willing to make it a third time. That's why you always come with backups on the holidays, especially for stuff that's a little bit tricky. And this is a store-bought caramel that they make in store at my local grocery store, so more or less the same as I would have used. So, we're just gonna use that, and we're gonna revisit caramel at a later date. But let's just let this rest to the point where we can handle it before we turn it out onto a cooling tray. The exterior has got crunch. It's really just like an apple pie mixed with like a banana bread. It's a beautiful thing. As always, all my holiday recipes are in my holiday plan of attack, link down in the description. You can get the ebook version and the web portal access, or if you are a Patreon member, you get that for free. Caramel is a very tricky thing. It's a very frustrating thing. I'm gonna do a deep dive on caramel and I'm gonna get back to you guys. Thank you all to my patrons scrolling up on the screen. Thank you for watching. Thank you anyone who supports me this time of year. I'm particularly grateful for all of you. So thank you, love you all. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.